Hello everybody, it's me Frog here, and welcome back to another devlog. I'm making a platformer game called Froggle Swinging Grapple. It's about a game who can stretch his frog to stick onto any tongue to swing a grapple around the stages. After two long years and a few months, I'm happy to announce that this game is nearly done. Probably. I estimate that I can finish everything as of the end of August, which is right before I go to college, and after that I want to spend another month essentially having people play test the game to see if there's any bugs or if there's any basic gameplay feature I probably missed and ideally I want to have the game released right after that month that is basically a plan which means if nothing goes wrong the game can be released by October this year and with all the plans out of the way I would like to begin the topic of today's video alright Q&A some of my absolutely wonderful viewers might be familiar with this since I've done one in the past. Well, to be exact, it's actually a shoot post disguised as a Q&A video, but today I feel like I should actually answer these questions one by one. Now I'm gonna pronounce these names horribly wrong, so do let me know if they are wrong. Anyway, starting with question from Palizaric. When did you start development? And how did you get your knowledge? Uh, the time I started making this is like around the end of April to the start of May in 2020. And in terms of skills, uh, let's start with programming skills. Uh, in terms of programming skills, I kind of just like been ever. I've been like making games ever since elementary school, like using Scratch and other engines and stuff. So it kind of just goes along with that. And in terms of the tools I'm using right now. Uh, I learned Python from high school and uh, decided to learn Pygame myself after being suggested by a cool online friend. Ricardo Costa asks, what motivates you? The fact that there's people who want to play my game, like, uh, it's such a cool thing. Like, that's like one of the main things that motivates me. Also, I just like, I, I like this game, alright? Like, it's come a long way, so I just... I feel like I can actually finish these things and that just push me forward. Also like, I don't even like want a huge success, I just want to see like, I just want to see people buy them and enjoy playing them. Like that's just all I wanted to see. Pros ask, do you plan a career in game development? And no, I don't think I, sh I would consider a career in game development because I don't, I don't think it's like financially sustainable. unless. Unless it's very successful, in which I might actually consider. Enemy Striker asks, do you plan on making a level editor? And here's an interesting one. Will I make a level editor? Well, yes, there is a level editor, because duh, how else would I make the levels? But I know what you're asking. And user-friendly and elaborate uh, level editor for you to make stuff with and yeah, I get that. It's a it's a good concept because considering that there isn't really that much content in the base game, it would be a good idea to have user created content. But but it's not as easy as you think because well, you see, if if we don't even consider the user friendly uh level editor, which is like already a huge pain in the ass to make, I the the objects in this game like. They weren't exactly programmed to work perfectly with one another. It's not like in Mario Maker, you can just drag an object onto a track and they will just move. Or you can just put uh, specific things together to form a contraption. Like, things don't work perfectly together, is what I'm trying to say. So, like, there's a lot of complicated stuff, but like, usually when you put two things together, it results in a glitch. And with that much combination, that's a lot of glitch, which I don't. I have to fix all by myself, and I don't wanna. So yeah, there's a high chance that I might just release the level editor that I'm using, which I can show you right now. Yeah, it's basically this, and you can put stuff, but I, there are a lot more complicated stuff that you don't understand to, like mix, put special objects in, like. Uh, it's a thing, but it's not easy to use, and it's not as user friendly as like Mario Maker. But to end this question on a high note, I am like uh, recently scripting cutscenes for this game, and 
I essentially use text files to like put commands in them and they will just do what the commands say. The good news is it's kind of like programming so there's a chance that I can expand it and you can like kind of create your own enemies and stuff but uh, do take this with a huge huge grain of salt. Lim Limity asks, who is the funnier person alive and is also just amazing in general and is just wonderful in every aspect known to men and is also extremely funny? Uh, it's you Lim, my ass has never been attached to my body ever since you entered my life. Miles Corley and Pugus Frog ask, will you make underwater levels? Nope, uh, I didn't add water levels because I can't find a good reason to have them. Now I know what you're thinking, Frog, every platformer game ever has an underwater level, so why don't yours? Well, in the early development, I actually uh, implemented water controls and decided to play around with them. But then I thought to myself, why? Why underwater levels? What the hell do I do with them? Now, uh, you know, I can just simply like... You know I could just do things like make Fraggle's gravity float here, or give him water control TM, but like, I, in my point of view, in the way that I'm looking at it, it's like I'm looking for a reason for water level to exist. I'm making Fraggle swing and grapple, so it makes sense that the stuff I'm adding in the game has something to do with swing and grapple, but like, in this case I can't really think of anything any way I can integrate water and swing and grappling. Like at the very least it has to it has to have something to do with Frogo's tongue, which is like the core mechanic of the game. But I just can't think of any. So that's why I just kinda decided to not have them. And at this point some of you might uh, wanna like share some uh, ideas on how to implement like underwater stuff into the game. And yeah, go for it. I would love to see that. It would be very interesting. But like, just bear in mind that the game is like 90% done at this point, so your ideas probably won't be ended up in the game. Pogus Frog asks, what type of frog is Froggle in the game? Well, if you actually look at the features of Froggle, you will notice that he has a vibrant green, and he only has two feet. With these two pieces of information, we can conclude that Froggle is actually a mutated frog. 